when you first announced the film Zoya, you mentioned the Archie's comics were a huge part of your childhood. What specifically made you want to adapt the comics for an Indian audience? The fact that I got the opportunity to adapt it made me say yes. Uh, I grew up reading the Archies. It was a huge part of my childhood, my like my my adolescence. And uh, there was no, I, I never thought one day I'd have the opportunity to take it and adapt it and put it out in a way in what I love to do, which is film, and merge the two. Uh, Things and uh, when it came to me, uh, there was uh, uh, two thoughts: uh, How do I do this, keeping the essence of the comic, and at the same time, uh, tell a story out of India that makes sense uh, because it's got fans globally. And the second thing was uh, like, I'm going to find a way. I'm not going to say no. All right, tell me how it all came together. Tell us a little bit about that journey. I had a meeting with a gentleman called Sharad from India Graphic. And he actually contacted me because he wanted me to adapt another comic. Uh, and while we were having a conversation about that, I just happened to tell him that uh, I uh, am an Archie fan, a huge fan actually. And he told me, oh, it's ours and we just leased it to Netflix. And I was like, oh, okay. And then in my head, it was like leased to Netflix, so it's gone. And the next thing I know is he's spoken with Netflix and they contacted me and said, would you like to uh, do a film? And Archie has never done a feature. They've never done a live action feature film. So to have the opportunity for it to come out of India and uh, for me to be like the first film out there was huge. All right. So the buzz around the Archies has been quite intense ever since it was first announced in August 2021. We're still a few months away from the release, but can you tell us a little about what viewers can expect from the movie, especially since the comics have been in circulation since 1941 and there's just so much source material? I think the viewers should know that it's a live action. It's a coming on, on, onto the screen of a comic book, you know. So it's, uh, uh, I mean, yes, it's adapted to some kind of reality here, but it's pushed, you know. It's fantastical. It's over the top a little bit. And uh, it is a comic. It's a comic come to life. So look at it like that. They can expect a musical. Uh, they can expect music. They can expect uh, a very, uh, they can expect very, very fresh performances. All right. Um, speaking of source material, have you stayed true to the comics or strayed away from them? I mean, uh, uh, both. A bit of both. Uh, all the characters are the same. All their names are the same. And straight away means because the minute you put it into another milieu, I've had to change certain things. Also, uh, when you read the comic, it's like two pages. You know, they're gags or they're skits. So they're, it's literally short. But to string a film that's two hours long, and to create a narrative, you need a story. And to make that story, you need to give it things and give it longevity and certain sustenance that has to carry through. So yeah, I've adapted a few things, but the characters and the essence remains the same. All right. And how would you say the Archies has been updated for a new generation of viewers? You know, that was the trick. The trick was I, what I wanted to do with the Archies or what it meant to my generation. Uh, uh, for us, it was a portal to the West, you know, when we were growing up. And uh, there was uh, there was nothing teenage. There were no comics that were. They were all superheroes. They weren't teenagers like regular kids. And I wanted to retain that essence. It was a simpler time, a more innocent time, uh, a friendlier, softer, gentler time. Uh, I wanted to retain all those things. I also wanted to retain the characters as they essentially are. So, but when you take all that, so it had to be period for it to be true to that. But at the same time, it had to resonate with the youth today and what matters to the youth today. So I think those were the things that the writers and me had to put together. All right. And, you know, there's just been so much buzz around the cast. All of them are newcomers. How did you go about picking each character and matching their personalities to the characters they play? I have a very good cast of directors. Firstly, uh, Nandini Shrikan and Karan Mali. So, uh, I, I, I mean, I owe a lot to them. But uh, like I said, you know, for me, when I'm casting actors, the essence of the character is very important. And I, that, that's what I look for in the actor that comes in. Is that is the essence there, you know? Um, because everything else you can kind of manipulate on a level. The essence is, it's either there or not. And um, yeah, so it was, it was a lot of additions, a lot of additions. Uh, two of them uh, I found on social media. Uh, one came from Instagram, one came on YouTube. Uh, so it, it, it's not, there was no one thing. And people, they, they did a lot of tests. We tested a lot of kids. 
Okay. And outstanding cinematography has always been a major marker of a Zoya Akhtar directorial. We know Zindagi Na Milegi Dilbar and what it did for Spain. So, do you think the Archies will do that for Uti? Uh, I mean, well, we've, uh, we, Uti Sun, we've called it Riverdale though, you know. Uh, but I hope so because I don't think that Uti needs me. Uti is packed, everyone goes to Uti. Uti is gorgeous, you know. So I don't think uh, uh, Indians need to be made aware of it. It's a gem. They already know of it, they go there, I don't think it needs me. I needed Uti. And thankfully, it was very kind to us. Uh, but uh, I, I'm very, very. Uh, um, uh, I, I find the cinematography is the eye because you're taking a medium, which is a visual medium. So it's very important how the camera works because you're telling the story through the camera. So uh, it has to be important. And uh, you know, I, I owe a lot to all the cinematographers I've worked with, and uh, I'm very lucky I've worked with a very talented bunch. All right. And so making a film with seven newcomers must have come with its own set of joyful experiences and challenges. Can you give us some insight into both of these? I mean, the challenges were they were completely raw. So you had to do a complete boot camp and you had to prep them, you know, uh, for uh, various reasons. One is you want uh, uh, your characters to be who you want them to be. You know, you want to co-create something with the actor. B, you want them to be comfortable when they hit the scene because it's overwhelming. You know, you have 200 people on a set, you have a camera in your face and you have to come out there and everyone keeps quiet and you have to perform. When the word action is said, it's, it, it's daunting. So you wanted them to be over that by the time they got to set. You wanted them to get on with each other. Uh, you wanted uh, a level of confidence and a level of ease to be instilled in them. And that only comes if they were prepared, mm -hmm. you know, and that they're not so nervous. So there was a big, big boot camp. There was a big, uh, you know, they had dance class, acting workshops, uh, cinematography training, uh, because it's a technical job as well. They had uh, to learn cycling, skate pace. I mean, it was, it's endless, you know. Um, they did well. And the, the, the beauty of it was for me, I got to somehow vicariously relive my debut because everything for them was a first. Everything was a new thing, everything. So that wide-eyedness, which I've kind of forgotten, uh, was a very uh, refreshing experience for me. You know, right. To look at it through their eyes was a very good for me. So for you, because you were on set and you know you were with them day in and day out, can you kind of tell us any specific incidences with like did like did two of them get along better or did like were any of them friends like anything like you know that they're cute all they're they're all gang. I think they spent so is that cute together, banter yeah. you know because I've seen that like yeah. you know uh, I think Vedang and uh, Agastya teasing each other it's super cute so did you witness any of that on set yeah, and, yeah like, of course I mean they, they're like they, they just stick together all the time yeah and, um, they were really hyping up uh, Yuvraj as well when yeah, he was yeah. they hype each other you up. know I love that and I hope it stays, you know, I hope that they all do well and I hope through their careers they champion each other because they've been really good. Right. They've been really good. They've been good for each other, good with each other. They played off each other. And uh, uh, I think that energy comes through. And I hope that wherever they go and however they do, they champion each other. So it is a well-known fact that in the Archie's universe, fashion plays an integral part in conveying the personality of each character. Like in the comics, there's Preppy Archie, Casual Betty, Chic Veronica, very Jeans Dean-esque kind of Reggie. Have you stuck to that blueprint in the Archies as well? And can you give us a peek into what the mood board looked like? Because I know you're very passionate about that. So yeah, tell me I more. work with the Pranamita Singh, who's just amazing. And yeah, we, we did stick with the Archies on a level. It's set in the Anglo-Indian community. It's set in the 60s. But in 60s India, uh, uh, the fashion was a lot more 50s. So if you see a Veronica Lodge, yeah, she's the one that has access, she's the one that travels, she's the one that is up to date with fashion and trends, unlike the others. Uh, things were stitched, they were all hand stitched, fabrics, materials were different. Uh, everything was kind of bespoke here. Uh, and because it's the hills, there's a certain kind of materials that were used and certain climate uh, things that were uh, in your, your clothing was informed by the weather and climate. So the, keeping all those things in mind and of course pushing it, you know, uh, we keep the characters and we push it. So you make it uh, a little fantastical, a little pretty, a little storybook, a little comic book. Yeah. All right. And 
on the topic of fashion i actually also see the film delivering a ton of fashion inspiration to the youth and what what do you think about that you know i mean uh, 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 i love i love what homes has done with them uh, and uh, i would love to dress like <laughs> hanjuli so I, i i don't know i i see it's 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 child like you know what i mean uh, what is beautiful about it is that they play teenagers and they play young and there's an innocence to their clothing which i find very attractive and uh, very appropriate mm-hmm. uh, so i hope that catches on i, I you know as opposed to everything right now is kind of like hypersexualized which is not always nice so i hope uh, people catch on and there's some interesting trivia i learned from the hmu team as well betty's uh, makeup for example is more fresh face and dewy whereas veronica's is exclusively matte because she frequently holidays abroad like you said and gets access to beauty trends and products before anybody else in riverdale does can you tell us a little bit about this what did the beauty moon board look like uh you know actually no i mean i i was there and I, I, when i saw it and when i look at it and see it in terms of characters i get it and natasha nishas who i work with is amazing but i'm I, it, it's just not my thing <laughs> for day i can't really talk to you about makeup i have no clue i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. okay so without giving away too much of the plot we saw the word protest in the teaser and so yeah you know we all know all your movies do have a sort of moral to them like navigating the pitfalls of fame luck by chance or seizing the moment in zindagi na milegi dobara did you feel like this was a right time to talk about protests in india you know uh, uh, the thing is 60s was a very special era and it was the era of rock and roll and it was the era where i think people i think kids especially teenagers they genuinely believe they could change the world you know i think no other decade has had that enthusiasm in that way and i think that that spirit that rock and roll spirit of you know we can change the world i think that needed to be captured and i think that's where it came from right i it, think it's it, it's very era specific yeah interestingly because that is kind of come back yeah. in a big way now yeah. after so many years that we once again think we can mm. change the world so that is interesting but what are you most looking forward to about the archies finally going out into the world because of course we know it will be huge in india there's been so much conversation around it but there seems to be a lot of global interest around it too because i was talking to neha and she told me at tedum they found out that they had a, their very own fan and club and yeah. that is adorable yeah. so tell me a little more about that no i mean see it's it's it is a global ip you know and uh, they are iconic so i i am nervous because it's the first film that comes out and it's coming out of india so you want people to like you know a uh, world over if anyone watches it like you want to be proud of it you know uh, so i'm i i, I fingers crossed uh, the archie audience the people that know archie the original archie is a comic i hope they like it uh and i hope uh, they they see the um uh they resonate with it in, in what archies made them feel and i think that we are okay you know everyone else either buys it or not but as long as the archie fans uh are okay with it then uh, we've done well i mean it is like you know um it's i don't know it's a first film and it they made it in india so it's uh, i hope it i hope it goes well totally yeah. <laughs> All right that's yeah. it thank you thank you zoya